Every application you encounter is bound to require tube bending. Like all the procedures in this video, there are a variety of tubing tools available in this category. And this is one procedure where practice makes perfect. You may want to have several of these tools in your toolbox. They range from the simple spring tube bender to the specialty ratchet hand bender. Each is designed to help you do your work more efficiently no matter what the situation. The spring tube bender has been around for quite some time. Simply slip the proper size spring over your tubing and bend to the desired angle. Remove the spring by twisting it as you pull it off your tubing. The spring tube bender is a fast way to bend tubing from quarter to seven-eighths inch outside diameter. It's easy to use and, provided you use the proper diameter spring for your tubing, prevents the tube from collapsing. If the wrong size is used, the tube will collapse. If you ever notice compromises in the spring, such as gaps or a crease, the tool must be replaced. And don't forget to remove it before brazing. Next is a full range heavy duty tube bender for making fast bends up to 180 degrees on quarter, 5 16th, and 3 8 inch outside diameters. Although this tool bends multiple diameters, there are individual benders for larger sizes up through 7 8 inch. This tool works by utilizing leverage through actuating two handles. First, Visualize and mark the bend you're going to make. A quality tool will include instructions on how to mark and bend your tube. Next, place your tubing into the bender and slowly apply leverage to the tubing to make your bend. You can make additional bends accordingly until you've met the demands of your installation. Carefully mapping out your necessary bends and the order in which you need to make them will save you time and aggravation. To locate 90 degree bends on this type of bender, mark the center line of the first bend location on the tube. If the dimensioned length is to the left of the zero degree mark, align the bend location mark with the L on the bending handle. Rotate the bending handle until the tube is bent to the 90 degree angle. If the dimension length is to the right of the zero degree mark, then align the bend location mark on the tube with the R on the bending handle. A popular specialty bender is the ratchet tube bender. It's perfect for gaining access to soft copper tubing in tight spaces where it's next to impossible to gain any manual leverage. Start by choosing the desired size bending mandrel. Slide the square hole on the ratchet bar. Now fasten the correctly sized crossbar assembly on the bender body so that the desired size bending shoes are in the same plane as the mandrel. Now, use the wing screw to fasten them together. The bending shoes are marked with the various tube sizes. Rotate until the desired shoe size faces the tube that you'll be bending. Pull the feed lever away from the handle and push the mandrel and ratchet bar back towards the handle. Then, release the feed lever and you're ready to bend tubing. Put your tubing between the mandrel and bending shoes. Again, make sure the bending shoe and mandrel are matched for size. Squeeze the feed lever a few times to begin the bend. When the bender is in the desired position, continue squeezing the lever until the bend is complete. To remove the tube, pull the feed lever away from the handle. Push the mandrel back toward the handle and take the tubing out. Use the two indexes on top of the mandrel to locate your bends. If the desired bend is to be finished 10 inches from the left end of the tube, locate the 10 inch mark to the right side index and bend. Likewise, if the desired bend is to be 10 inches from the right, locate the 10 inch mark to the left side index and bend. You can accomplish a bend in the opposite direction by mounting the reverse bend adapter to the ratchet tube bender. No matter which direction you're working in, the ratchet tube bender is restricted to a maximum of 90 degrees. When you make a bend with this tool, the distance between bends depends on the diameter of the tubing you're working with. If you have to bend hard copper, first anneal and then cool it prior to bending so the bending mandrel and shoes are not damaged.